morning I woke up and, you know, in my PJs, out to my couch, ready, to computer in front of me, saying, okay, what are you going to write today? What terrible thing is going to happen and how are you going to manage it? All of a sudden I started to think, you know, instead of sitting here and having such a big pity party for yourself like you've been doing for the last couple of weeks, there's something you need to understand. And again, I don't know who this voice is, but I'm forever grateful to whoever got into my brain and had this dialogue with me. These people live in a place where there's no calendar. There's no clock. There are windows, but not really accessible windows. They don't see change of seasons. They don't know the passage of time. They don't know when it's Christmas or Easter. They don't know when it's their birthday. They don't know how many birthdays they have had. There's absolutely no way for them to know anything that we use to, to define our lives. And then I started to think about Tegan, and she is one of the main characters in this book. She's an Irish immigrant girl who came from Queenston County Cork when she was 16 years old and institutionalized when she was just short of 18. And it's now 1970-something. She's you know, 50, 60 years old. And something about that just made me stop and think, and I said, there are no mirrors in these places. Tegan hasn't looked in a mirror in over 50 years. Now, we look in a mirror multiple times every day. We're looking for the gray hairs, for the new wrinkles, you know, whatever, the chin up, or the one that I always do, walking by a mirror at a glance going, oh my God, that's my mother. <laughs> right? Now, that really struck me. One more way that we identify ourselves, that we figure out how our life is progressing, is by the passage of time, how old I am, what do I look like? And then how do I dress? That's not even a conversation in an asylum. So it was at that moment that I realized that these people were not only robbed of their lives, they were robbed of their voices. They had no rights, they had no say, they had no ability to know anything about themselves other than what they experienced every day in those asylums. And so that day I wrote a story that included Tegan, and she saw her reflection. It wasn't a mirror, I can't tell you exactly what it was, but she saw her reflection in something. And as she did, she was mesmerized because she was looking at her mother, and she was devastated because after a certain amount of time, she realized it was herself. It was not her mother. Mm -hmm. And first it was, ma'am, ma like, I want to touch you, I want to talk to you, and then it's me. And that was the day that writing this book and giving voice to these people became so important to me. And it had to be done, because we don't know these stories, and they need to be told. Mm -hmm.